سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let's gather just once again on the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al jami' the one who gathers subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise also as we know the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam in the hadith he says ana muhammad wa ana ahmad wa ana al hashir alladhi yahshur an nas ala qadami wa ana aqib wa laysa ba'di an nabi the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam he said i am muhammad I am Ahmed, I am the gatherer, and people will gather at my feet, around my feet, fi dunya wa fi akhirah. And I am the aqib, the end, succession of all the prophets, and there'll be no prophets after me. <clears throat> the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, on the last Jummah of Sha'ban, just like today, alhamdulillah. Today is the last Jummah of Sha'ban, meaning the, no, uh, the Jummah of 1443, of the month of Sha'ban will never return again. Whatever you placed within the blessed month of Sha'ban, you placed. Whatever you missed within the blessed month of Sha'ban, you missed. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. Will Allah bless us in the month of Rajab and in the month of Sha'ban and allow us to reach the month of Ramadan. Just allow us to reach the month. All khair is in the blessed month of Ramadan. On the final khutbah, on the second uh, of the of the Juma, on Sha'ban, the second year after the Hijrah, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he spoke. He stood up and he gave the Juma khutbah, and his Juma khutbah was about this blessed month that Allah subhanahu wa taala prescribed for the believers to fast. So we're just going to read a little bit from the khutbah so we understand what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. He said, أيها الناس قد أظل شهر عظيم مبارك شهر فيه ليلة خير من ألف شهر وجعل الله صيامه فريدا وقيام ليله تتطوعا من تقرب فيه بخصلة من خير كان كمن أدى فريدا فيما سوى ومن أدى أدى في فريدة فيه كان كمن أدى سبعين فريدا فيما سوى وهو شهر صبر والصبر ثوابه الجنة وشهر مواسى وشهر يزاد في رزق المؤمن فيه من فطر فيه صائما كان مغفرة لذنوبه وعتق رقبته من النار وكان له مثل أجره من غيره أن ينقص من أجره شيء فقالوا يا رسول الله ليس كلنا يجد ما يفطر صائم قال صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم يعطي الله هذا الثواب من فطر صائما على تمرة أو شربة ماء أو مذقة للبن وهو شهر أوله رحمة وأوسطه مغفرة وآخر عتق من النار من خفف عن مملوكه فيه غفر الله له واعتقه من النار واستكثر فيه من أربع خصال خصلتين تردون بهما ربكم وخصلتين لا غنى لكم عنهما فأما الخصلتان التاني تردون بهما ربكم فشهادة لا إله إلا الله وتستغفرونه وأما الخصلتان التاني لا غنى لكم عنهما فتسألونه الجنة وتتعوذون به من النار ومن سقى صائما سقاه الله من حوض شربة لا يضمع بعدها أبدا The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in this khutbah the second year after the hijrah he stood and he said to his companions, he said, O oh people, all people, قَدْ أَظَلَّكُمْ شَهْرَ عَظِيمٌ مُبَارِكٌ You are now on the eve of a great blessed month. شَهْرَ فِيهِ لَيْلَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ You have a month now in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in it a night خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ It's not a thousand months. It's greater than a thousand months. So the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, on one occasion they were sitting outside, and they were kind of upset, anxious. Why? And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi came out and they said, "Yeah, the Prophet said, become what's with you all?" And they turned around and said, "You know, us, we only have a short lifespan." And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Most of my ummah, they will die between the age of sixty to seventy. Anybody who lives over a day over seventy years old." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has expanded your lifespan. 
But the vast majority of the Ummah between the age of 60 to 70, you're going to die. It's fine, they die. You find that Rasul, 63 years of all age, on a dominant opinion, dies. Abu Bakr is 63 years old. Umar, 63 years old. Khulafa Rashidin, 63 years old. The vast majority of the Ummah between 60 to 70. And they say we only have a short lifespan. The previous nations, they had many, many, many hundreds. Some of them up to thousands of years, they live longer than us. And they had far greater actions than us. How can we compete with that, Ya Rasulullah? And we're the best of nations. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam beseeches Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala reveals, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. Wa ma adaraka ma laylatul qadr. Laylatul qadr khayrun min al fi shahar. تنزل الملائكة وروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر The, the eyes reveal, the souls reveal Al-Qadr, the night of power إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر ليلة القدر Verily we revealed it on the, the night of power The night of power, the entire Quran is taken from the Lawh Al-Mahfud to the very very first heaven and in a period of 23 years, Jibreel alayhi salam is going between the first heaven and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa 23 years. On the dominant opinion. Many of the Imams of Hadramaut are going to say, what does it mean? Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. It means on that night, the entire Quran is revealed to the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the period of 23 years, Jibreel is going to the heart of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, extracting the meanings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, revealing it to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his tongue. As the Imams are going to say, Jibreel, he engages the Prophet over 124,000 times. So we're going to say 224,000 times he engages the Rasul وسلم, for this revelation, this Quran that has been revealed. What do you know of the night of power, Allah is saying? What do you think you know about the night of power? Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahar. It's greater than a thousand nights in the, in the, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we ask some of the teenagers in the madrasa to work out what's a thousand months. What is a thousand months? And they equated it to 83 odd years, just over 83 years. I mean, you catch Laylatul Qadr, you catch every goodness. Many people in this room right now, you've had more Ramadans than the Prophet wasallam. See, the Rasul only has nine Ramadans in his life. Some of you use about 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years of Ramadans. How many Laylat al Qadrs have you caught in that time? How many Laylat al Qadrs have you caught in that time? And what does that mean for you? You know, one tasbih on that night as if you praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 83 years. One sadaqah that night as if you've given sadaqah for 83 years consecutively. Continuously for every single moment that there is a moment in 23 years, in 83 years. Every single moment. We fast, we break our fast. We give charity, we stop. But can you imagine what Allah has for those people who give charity that night? They catch that night. Every single moment for 83 years and beyond, you've been given charity. That recitation of Quran, as if you recited Quran 83 years plus with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet saw us in telling us. And then he says, Tanazzul al malaikita wa ruhu fiha. Bidni min rabbihim. Now, that on that night, angels are going to descend upon that night. Wa ruh. And the ruh is going to descend on that night. And so the ulama of tafsir, they're going to say, What is the ruh? What is this, the ruh, that name ruh? What is descending with the angels? Some of them say, Gabriel. Jibreel alayhi salam, he's descending with the angels. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi in the hadith, he says, on the night of power, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he allows the descension from the heavens, more angels than there is sand on the earth, than the grains of sand, than the shrubs, than stones, the number of angels that are descending on that night. Who's leading them? In one opinion, Gabriel leading them. The other opinion, Al-Ruh is the angel far greater in size than Gabriel that's leading the angels. Let's not forget that. Like the Prophet ﷺ, when he describes Jibreel السلام, he only encounters Jibreel in the full form twice in his entire life. And the Prophet ﷺ describes Gabriel. He said one wing of Gabriel, one wing. And Gabriel has over 500 wings. 
One wing is from the east horizon to the west horizon. That's the wing of Gabriel, one wing. Now, you know the horizon? It's an imaginary point, it doesn't exist. And you can see the horizon's over there, you get over there, you realise the horizon moves again. You go again, it moves again. It's an imaginary point. What the Prophet tells him trying to say is one wing of Gabriel, the size of the entire earth, Yanni. Gabriel, that's Gabriel, one wing. The Ruh, the Sutli Imam say, an angel bigger in size than Gabriel that brings them, brings them down. The third opinion, who's the Ruh? The Ruh, Isa alayhi salam. Ruh Allah. He's the one that brings what? The angels down on that night. The sense with the angels. What are they doing? Salam on here, hatta mafla al fajr. They're giving salams to the believers on that night. That's all they're doing. They're going around giving salams. And believe you me, there's people who experience Laylat al Qadr haqiqatan in the real sense of Laylat al Qadr. Now, one of the signs that you've experienced Laylat al Qadr, you cry that night. And you don't know why you cry. It overwhelms you. The kalam Allah overwhelms you. Ramadan overwhelms you. The acts of obedience that you've done, they begin to have an impact on the heart. And yet, we know on one position it's 27th night. Like the position of Abdullah ibn Abbas, he's going to say 27th night. Why? Because it says in the surah, Inna anzalna hu fi laylat al-qadr, the very last ayah, Salamun hiya hatta matla'il fajr. He says that here, in the verse, if you count the number of words, that word there, here, which is referring to the night, is the 27th word. He says that, on his opinion, 27. But the Imams are going to say, no, no, no. It can be any of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Some of the Imams are going to say, it can be any night of Ramadan. And some will say it's the 17th night. Some of the Imams of Hadramaut, 17th night of Ramadan. Why? Laylat al-Badr. The night in which Allah grants the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi some victory. Where he's, Ya Hayu, Ya Qayyum in Sajood to Allah. Ya Allah, if this small group of 313, Lighthouse, 313, if this small group are destroyed tomorrow, you will not be worshipped on earth. The cry of the Rasul on that night, Allah <coughs> descend, sends down Sakinah on that night to the Rasul. And just before Fajr, the Prophet in Sajood the whole night, Ya Hayu, Ya Qayyum, La ilaha illad. Ya Hayu, Ya Qayyum, La ilaha illad. Ya, the entire night. Until before Fajr, he raises his head off the ground and he looks at Abu Bakr as Sadiq and he says, Allah's promised us victory today. And 313, they stand there, let's not forget. Now, some of the kids fast, we fasted. They stand there in the first year of Ramadan. Some of them never fasted Ramadan before. Yeah, never fasted. They stand there with less than 12 swords. They stand there in the midday heat of Arabia. They stand there with clothes, without body armor. They stand there with only a few horses. Horses in that age, like tanks. Who are they facing? The greatest superpower of the day, Quraysh. A thousand strong they're facing. That is standing. And that's where the hadith, the Prophet wasallam, he says, Man sama Ramadan, imanan, ihtisaban, ghufir Allah ma taqaddam min dhambihi. The Prophet said, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, Imanan. They fast with complete faith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reward them for this act of ibadah. You'll say, people say, why do you fast? Oh, well, it's, you know, we feel what some of the poor feel. No, you know, we feel it's good for the body. And uh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that, that's all good. That's all good. Why do we fast? We're ordered to fast. We have a Lord that's ordered us to fast. He told us to fast. He told us to pray. We understand we're slaves. He is the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't fast because the community is fasting. You're not fasting because your mum and dad are telling to fast. Or your husband and your wife fasting. You're fasting imanen. With complete faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ihtisaban. Anticipating the reward from God. That what? Allah forgives all that's past. Know the hadith, the Prophet is speaking about the people of Badr. But it extends to every single time. Man qama fi Ramadan. Man qama Ramadan imanan, ihtisaban, ghufira ma taqaddam min dhambi. Whoever stands in Ramadan, and them companions 313 stood with the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imanan, with complete faith, ihtisaban, 
anticipating the reward from God and God granted them victory on that day. That's why the people of Badr do whatever you want. Sayyidina Jibreel comes at the end of the, Badr, the Battle of Badr when Allah sending angels, thousands upon thousands of angels, up to 5,000 to grant victory to his Rasul. Jibreel comes to the Prophet at the end of Badr and he says, see those who stood with you right now, khayr ahl ard they're the best of people on the face of the earth. He says, see the angels that came from the heavens today? Khair min ahl sama The best of angels of the heavens ever. The aid of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa Some are going to say the 17th night, that the night. Others are going to say different nights. Your Fat Mecca, the liberation of Mecca. That's going to be when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives his victory to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> the point being, we keep every single night alive in Ramadan. That's the whole point of it. And we spread our worship throughout the entire night. Why? Because we know at least we're going to catch an, an, an opinion. We're going to catch Laylatul Qadr. Now we were here in, subhanAllah, in Oldham a few years ago. A beautiful brother, Allah bless him. Allah have mercy on him. He's a young boy. He did itikaf with us over 15 years ago. Young boy. 27th night. I remember we came down. And he couldn't even read Quran properly. But he said, everywhere I look, I'm just seeing Quran. That's all I see. And so he said, he said even on your arm. And this, he doesn't know the Quran. He hasn't memorized the Quran. He can't even read. And so I said, what does it say on my arm right there? He says, Allah, Nur, As, Samawati, Wal, Ard. Allah, Nur, As, Samawati, Wal, Ard. Right, he's saying, I can see it on your arm. The brother, can't, Allah, he passed away a few years ago. He said, I can see Quran everywhere I look. No time we're sitting. Some of the brothers were Nelson with Sheikh Ibrahim. And khalas, last 10 days of Ramadan, when the brother's sitting there, as he's sitting there, he's reciting Quran, he looks up, he says, I look up, and he faints. And then he gets up, and he goes to Sheikh Ibrahim. He says, Sheikh Ibrahim, I don't know what's happening. He said, what? He said, I, I started reading the Quran. He said, and when I looked up, I saw all of the companions sitting in circles around the Rasul reciting Quran. Sheikh Ibrahim said, I don't know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> so he phones in Yemen. Allah speaks to one of the teachers in Yemen. What does that mean? One of the teachers turned around and said, tell the brother he's experiencing something of Laylatul Qadr. <laughs> those hearts, sensitive hearts, veils are lifted on that night for those type of individuals. The rest of us, if we don't experience, it doesn't matter if we experience or not. The thing is, we believe with yaqeenan that there's a Laylatul Qadr. And we believe that it's in the last 10 days. Khayrun min alfi shahr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made fasting obligatory. And he's made standing in night prayer from that which is voluntary to do. And then the Prophet says, Whoever performs an atom's weight of, atoms, atoms weight of goodness in Ramadan. Kaman adda farid. I mean, whoever performs anything of charity, anything of charity in Ramadan, even smiling when you don't want to smile, because you're fasting. <laughs> yeah. Even smiling when you don't want to smile, you have the reward of a farid. Charity in the month of Ramadan, best charity, reward of a farid. Now, anything that you do from nafar, reward of a farid with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Prophet him said, Whoever performs that which is far, he has the reward of 70 faraid. 70 far. You pray your prayer in Jama'ah, 70 far, as if you performed in that month. Deeds multiplied, is, in some narrations are going to mention 70 to 500 to whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it to be. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it to be, from the most, from when the clock strikes Maghrib on the first night of Ramadan. The gates of goodness are open for all the ummah. The entire ummah, all goodness is open. And he continues by saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, It's the month of patience. Why? What is the point of fasting? We know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed it for us in the Quran. That's the objective of fasting. And the Prophet says, you know, Prescribed for you as fasting that's being prescribed for those prior to you in order that you become people not who lose weight 
I know who deal with diabetes. I know how to feel what the poor people maybe in other places feel. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ You'll become people of God consciousness. You'll become people who are aware of God. The Imams of Fiqh are going to tell us why. Fasting, why? Because we all have egos. We all have desires. And now that nafsa ammara bisu that calls us to evil, we're going to put it in check by fasting. We're going to put it in check by fasting. Why? We're not going to look at haram. Look at the Prophet I know many of you attending courses on Fiqh. Those things that break fast. And you say eating and drinking and having relations with your spouse in the daylight hours, they break your fast. But the Prophet didn't say that. Look what he said. He says, Khamsa yufattir as Five things that break your fast. Five things that break them. Four of them in relation to your tongue. One in relation to your eyes. The first thing the Prophet has said, Kadib. Person who lies while they're fasting. A white lie while you're fasting. Any lie while you're fasting breaks your fast. The, sex one, the second one, Ghamima. Backbiting. A person who backbites, speaks behind people back. On the phone, on WhatsApp, on whatever social media right there. Fast broken. The Prophet tells him telling us. The third one, Namima, spreading gossip. In the age, which was subhanAllah, <coughs> like no other age, in it. afaq, as the Prophet Sallallahu said. A person will wake up and a lie will reach the afaq, the horizons in a moment. The Sahaba at that time, no frame of reference for that. No frame of reference we see in our age, in it. In a split second, it's on the other side of the world. Spreading gossip. The fourth one, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, a qawl azur. A false testimony. A lie mentioning the name of God. Wallahi. I swear by Allah. I swear on the Quran. I never and I, but I did and I didn't. Lying whilst mentioning the name of Allah SWT. All in relation to your tongue. The fifth one. The Rasul going to tell us. Gazing at something with desire. Gazing at the opposite gender with desire. Whether that be on your phone or in the streets or whatever it may be. Look at that, the Imams are going to say, and Imams are going to say, what does that mean? It means in, in aspect of the law, the fiqh, you haven't broken your fast. But your reward, your muqiyama, you have none for that fast. The blessings of that fast, you don't receive it. And some of the Imams are going to say, you have to make qadar of those fasts. Why? Because the Rasul tells you that it breaks it. But it's nothing physical, it's metaphysical. It's to do with your state right there. The Prophet said, Shahr Sabr. It's the month of patience. Naam? And he says, Well, Sabr, Thawabu Jannah. Like in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ista'in billah bi sabri wa salah. Seek aid in God with patience and with prayer. The Imams of Tafsir can say, What is patience here? Fasting. Fasting. You discipline the soul by fasting. See, when you fast, Alhamdulillah, people don't talk a lot, innit? People got no time. Why? It's too tiring to talk. You see, when people break their fast, they haven't talking, innit? But before that, no one talking. Even the kids don't talk. Alhamdulillah. The madrasas are quiet. The houses are quiet. Why? Now look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How many a person who they fast and all they receive from their fast is hunger and thirst. That's all they receive. Why? Because all they do all day is speak about food and drink. That's all they think about, food and drink, when they're going to break the fast. You know, that's what they think about all the time, when they're going to break the fast. See, we should be thinking about great, greater things, things that are beyond that, in terms of our religion. Things of what is in store for those people who fast. You know, it's not just a month of the Qur'an, but it's a month of knowledge. It's a month of what? Understanding why we fast. It's understanding why we connect to the Book of Allah. It's understanding why we connect to the people of Allah SWT. So he says, Shahad Musawar. He says, Shahad Yuzadu fi riskil mu'min fihi. He said, The month in which the provision of a believer increases. <clears throat> and then he says, Man fatara fihi sa'iman. Kana maghfiratun li dhunubihi wa itfu rakabdi min nar. The Prophet said, Whoever gives a fasting person to break their fast. You have, see, it's not the biryani that comes afterwards. And it's not the meal that comes afterwards. You know, we always have this. Question in the, in the madrasa, 
we say, what was the iftar of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And people are going to say, dates and water. And we're going to say, okay, what was after that? And people are going to say, oh, maybe it was barley, maybe it was bread, maybe it was something else. No, no, there was nothing after that. Let's get that right. If it was water, if it was water. If it was water and dates, it was water and dates. If it was milk, it was milk. If it was honey, it was honey. There was no after meal after that. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever gives a breaking person to break their fast. Now, and here, if you're going to do something for someone, give dates to each other. Give zamzam water to each other. Forget the smosas, leave them. And it's not a month where people should be buying and st- st- storing their freezers up with food. It's not the month. It's not the month of having all those fancies. It's a month of decreasing with all that. It's a month of what now? Give it, try the sunnah fast. Try breaking your fast on dates and water. And praying on dates and water. And then not having nothing to eat until suhoor time. Try it once. Try it once in your life. At least try that sunnah fast. Where you don't go for samosas and fruit chart and everything else that comes with it. And I mean, subhanAllah, people make qadar of the food they missed in Ramadan. <coughs> The iftars are like qadar, like they're making up meals that they miss during the day. And so here the Prophet said, whoever gives a fasting person to break their fast, it's a means of Allah forgiving his sins. And he's released his head, his neck from hellfire. The Prophet mentioned the hadith. He said, whoever gives a fasting person to break their fast, he receives the same reward as the person who's fasting without Allah diminishing it from any one of them. They receive the exact same reward. All the toil and struggle they've gone through. And this is more so for our sisters, as we know. You know, there's certain times of the month that sisters, they can't fast. You can't fast, give people to break their fast. You see, receive the same reward as them. You receive the same reward as those people fasting. <coughs> then he says, His reward is the same. And nothing will diminish in terms of what? The reward of the fast. The companions of them, straight up. Some of us are poor. We, we, we can't give people nice fancy meals. We don't have things to give people to break their fast. And the Prophet says, Allah gives this reward. To whoever gives a fasting person to break from a tamar, from a date. Naam. Oh, shurba man. See shurba? A sip of water. Naam. Oh, madhat al Oh, a sip of milk. Whatever you got to give a fasting person, give them it. If oh, within your means, that what? You receive the exact same reward. And then he gave us, the, he found the month for us. He said, Awalahu rahma. The first of the month, the first third is mercy. As we mentioned yesterday, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Hadith Qudsi, where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Whoever I gaze upon upon the first night of Ramadan, I will never punish them thereafter. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Whoever I gaze upon upon the first night of Ramadan, I will never punish them thereafter. What is Allah gazing upon? He's not gazing upon your complexion. He's not gazing upon your clothes. The hadith in Sahih Bukhari, in Sahih Muslim, sorry, and Abu Huraira clarifies it. Inna Allah la yandru ila idsamikum, wa la ila suwarikum. Allah is not gazing to your complexions and He's not gazing to how you look. Walakin yandru ila qulubikum wa a'malikum, wa ila qulubikum wa niyatikum in other narration. Allah's gaze is always upon your heart and your intentions. See, the reward of Ramadan is the intentions that you make before the month enters. We should intend to fast a month. We should intend to do multiple khatams of the Quran. We should intend to stand in night prayer. We should intend, in a sense, to give sadaqah every single day. We make the intentions, as the Prophet said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالْنِيَاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ أَمْرًا مَا نَوَى Every single action is based upon the intention. And that's why for many of the schools are going to say you've got to intend every single fast before the Fajr of the next day. The Hanafis are going to say before the Duhar of the next day. You've got to intend that you're fasting the fast, the fourth fast of Ramadan. Make the intention of that every single night 
<coughs> of Ramadan to get the reward before the month comes in. Multiple intentions for the month. Awwalahu <coughs> rahma. The first of it is rahma. You know, today we bury a blessed individual there in Liverpool. We went Sheikh Ibrahim, went to a janazah. We buried the individual from the elders in the community, Allah yarhamahu. And then you know, one of the children, my children reminded me, the hadith, the Prophet said, whoever dies on a Friday is not held accountable with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about someone who dies in Ramadan? When there's no, the Prophet mentioned, all the doors of hellfire closed. Every door of paradise open. What type of life is it? I know people saying, oh, what do you mean dying in Ramadan? Well, you, what do you mean dying in Ramadan? I'm saying that Aisha dies in Ramadan. Saying that the Khadija dies in Ramadan. Fatima Zahra dies in Ramadan. The children of the Rasul die in Ramadan. Wasallam. And the days of forgiveness and the days of itkim and nar and the days of mercy, that's a sign of who those people are. On the days and months that you die. Like some of the great Imams, they die in the month of Rajab. Shahar Allah, as the Prophet said. The month of what? God. Others, they die in the month of Sha'ban. Shahr, Shahri, said the Prophet, in my month. And others, die in Ramadan. Shahr Ummati, the month of my nation. Shahr Al-Quran, the month of the Quran. Awwalahu Rahma, the first ten, intense mercy like we know not of. Whether we perceive it or we don't perceive it. Just like now, we're in the month of Sha'ban. Some people don't experience or feel anything in Sha'ban. Doesn't matter. The fact that it doesn't matter how you are or what you're stating, time meets you. And if Allah infuses rahmah, infuses nafahat, these divine gusts, they will reach you whether you perceive it or not. Like the Fakir knows an individual from Manchester. An individual from Manchester, many, many, many years ago, he got shot in the head. He's a drug dealer. He got shot in the head, a Muslim brother. Man, almost died. Came out of hospital a few weeks later, still in Ramadan. He spends one night, he doesn't know anything of Arabic, he doesn't know nothing of prayer, he doesn't know nothing about what, anything to do with his religion whatsoever. And all he does is spends one night walking around the masjid, asking Allah to forgive him. So he does in the last 10 days of Ramadan, one night just walking around the masjid, asking Allah to forgive him. He said, from that day, my life has never been the same. Allah flipped it 180 degrees. In one night. And now 20 years on, he's never gone back to that life. 20 years later, never gone back. Yet Allah's thrown him to the great people of this ummah. Allah's cast him into Mecca, cast him into Medina, cast him into, into Quds, cast him into what? Into the blessed lands of Turkey and Cyprus and Syria, the Yemen, Egypt. Cast him into Indonesia, Malaysia. Cast him with great people of this ummah. One night, he was sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One night of sincerity. One night he's sincere turning to Allah and look how Allah re rewarded that slave. Look how he rewarded that slave. Awlahu maghfira. Wa awsatuha maghfira. And the middle ten, maghfira. See, Allah loves to forgive. We have a Lord, his name is al ghafur al-Rahim. Naam. He is the one intensely forgiving. And he says in the Quran, قُلْ لِعِبَادِ الَّذِينَ أَسَرْفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Say to my slaves, they've gone too far. Look, see, I've done too many sins. Tell those people. Don't despair in God. Don't despair in the mercy of God. Verily, God forgives all sins. You know what's amazing about the statement that we read? The Prophet says in another statement said, Man Salma Ramadan, Iman and Ihtisaban. Another narration the Prophet said, Whoever fasts Ramadan with complete faith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will forgive them all their prior sins and all their sins that are to come. Another narration. You know the beautiful thing about that? At the Prophet وسلم, He didn't say minor sins, even though the Imams will say minor sins. The Imams say it means minor sins. The Rasul didn't say sigar. He said the noob. <coughs> sins, all sins. And we hope, inshallah, with that, it's major and minor sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives. And then he says, <laughs> And 
and the end of it is itq min al nar it's releasing your neck from hellfire that's what emancipation of hellfire is and then as we know the last 10 intense like the whole of this month rajab and shaban this month rain and the month before it it's all leading up to the climax where is the climax the last 10 days of ramadan that's it right there the last 10 days of ramadan itq min al nar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith he mentions on the last night of Ramadan Allah releases from neck releases from hellfire more necks than he released in the entire month combined on the last night of Ramadan the last 10 days of Ramadan the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam he wakes up his wife Aisha he says yeah Aisha he wakes his family up he says the time for sleep is over he ties his his arm for the men the rasul says for 9 years ittikaf last 10 days in the masjid 9 years every single year the last 10 days in the masjid cut off from the world you know you want your holy days your holidays that's what it comes from holy days take them in the last 10 days of ramadan that's what holidays are for to that's what called in english holy days the days that you're supposed to make holy we make them holy through ibadah not through la'ab and lahu not through playing amusement but then likewise the prophet told him in the last ramadan of his life 20 days ittikaf in the masjid 20 days ittikaf why because he knows he's not going to live for the following year sallallahu alaihi wa sahbihi wa sallam he's not going to live for that so he's telling us here it's been in now and then last night the last night when we hear is like any believer who now I call it Star Wars season. Star Wars right now you're going to see in the next few days or oh, as we've been sighted as not been sighted if we say to the years not been sighted mm-hmm. to all Star Wars right now going ahead. Any believer that's not looking forward to Ramadan that's not a good state to be in. Any believer who's not looking forward to fasting for ibadah it's not a good state to be in. It's like not looking forward to prayer. It's like not looking forward to go on Hajj. I mean you only bar yourself and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam wa sallam in a hadith which is mentioned by Imam Bukhari and Adab al Mufrad he says the rasul sallallahu alaihi wa sallam one day in Medina and Ibn Hibam in the sahih he says the prophet can take three steps on the mimbar and he says amin 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 three steps and so he gives the khutbah and after the khutbah the companions rush cuz they look look how in tune they are with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam even is amin they want to know why he's saying amin they just want to know why he's saying it and so they come to ya rasulullah why did you say amin he says gabriel appeared to me he said and gabriel said to me he says whoever meets ramadan whoever arrives at the month of ramadan and is not forgiven in the month of ramadan abdahu allahu anhu Allah has distanced them from him they distanced from the mercy of Allah qul amin ya muhammad say amin ya muhammad why is he asking the rasul to say amin because he knows if the rasul says amin sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa sallam it's stamped from the divine and the rasul says amin if you ain't forgiven in ramadan when do you think you're going to be forgiven you think hajj who says you're going to live to go on hajj But Ramadan day you're not forgiven in the nights of forgiveness. You're not forgiven in the days of forgiveness. Even when you're asleep the prophet has mentioned in Ramadan you're rewarded for sleeping in Ramadan. The entire month is forgiveness and you're not going to be forgiven in Ramadan. Mahroom. Mahroom you prohibited yourself from the blessing of Ramadan. <laughs> Then the rasul took a second step and said amin and they said ya rasulullah why did you say amin at the second step? He says Gabriel came to me again and he said those whose parents reach an old age and the youth are not do not enter paradise due to the parents know that they're distant from the mercy of God say amin ya muhammad say amin and the prophet says and says amin no in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do not even say to your parents uff it says uff la taqul lahum uff No, off is give me off the word off. So people read it. I'll be if I got to say off to me mum. No, it doesn't mean that. Off in Arabic, it's the least type of disrespect you can show your parents. You know what the Olam say? 
Here you go. Okay. <coughs> See that? That's off in Arabic. That's the lowest form of disrespect that you can give. Allah saying, don't even say that to them. Don't even show them that. No, gazing upon the face of your mother in the sight of Allah, greater than gazing upon the Kaaba. No, the dua of the mother guaranteed acceptance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith the Prophet tells us that the pleasure of Allah is with the pleasure of the Father. The anger of Allah is with the anger of the Father. The Rasul telling us in the multiple narrations about the rights of parents. Be careful. And they're from those people who have barred themselves from Ramadan. From the four types of people that have barred themselves from the blessings of Ramadan. Those who are turn away from their parents. Now be very careful. The rank of parents, not like another rank. And then likewise, the Prophet wasallam, when he took the third step and he said, Ameen. They said, Ya Rasulullah. Why did you say Ameen? Imam Bukhari again, he brings it. And the Prophet said, Gabriel came to me the third time. He says, O oh Muhammad, whenever you are mentioned and they do not send prayers upon you, know that they are distant from the mercy of Allah. Say Ameen, Ya Muhammad, say Ameen. And the Prophet وسلم, he says, Ameen. Don't be sitting there when you hear his name and don't say nothing. In the hadith in Tirmidhi, the Prophet mentioned, Man dhukirtu indahu falam al bakhil, man dhukirtu indahu falam yusalli alayhi. The Prophet said, The true miser is the one that when I am mentioned, he does not send prayers upon me. <coughs> That's the real miser. Who is he miserly to? Who is he stingy with? Himself. Allah and his angels send prayers on the Rasul, and you think you're better than them? Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima The Quran is going to tell us Oh you who believe Allah orders Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Send prayers upon him So the month is not just the month of the Quran It's the month of the one who came with the Quran It's not just the month of fasting But the one who came with fasting I mean khalas How do you think you get Your fast is like whose fast That you hajj We form hajj like whose hajj Allah says perform hajj if you're able to We don't know how to perform hajj We follow how the Rasul performed hajj The Prophet says pray as you see me pray <coughs> Allah doesn't say sallu in the Quran He says aqim as salah He doesn't say pray He says establish the prayer But who's the one who showed you how to pray We pray every ruku, Every sujood as he did Sallallahu even though we're not for Mike, we imitate him. Our fast, we imitate him in fasting. We imitate him with recitation of Quran. We imitate him in the way that we walk. We imitate him in the way that we interact. We in, 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 imitate him in the way that we deal with brothers and we deal with sisters. We deal with husbands and we deal with wives. We deal with children. We imitate him, sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna lakum fi, fi rasulillahi. Uswatan Hasana. No. Verily for you in the Messenger of God, for those who believe in Allah in the last day, is the most perfect, perfect of examples. And what's amazing right there, the Quran says Uswat al Hasana. Doesn't say Qudwat al Hasana, which means the same thing. Anyone's got Google Translate will type in Qudwa and it'll say a model or an example. And then they'll type in Uswa. And it will say a model, or say example, and say, look, it means the same thing. No, it doesn't mean the same thing. See, in the books of fiqh, you'll find the qudwa. The imam is the qudwa. He's right there in front of you. You see him. That's the example in front of you. The uswa is the example that you have, that you haven't seen yet. See, Allah says, لَكُمْ أُسْوَةٍ hasana." The perfect example for some of you that have not seen him yet. That's for what? The Ummah that comes after him. And that's why the Prophet tells him, said, glad tidings to my brothers. And the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, alasna ikhwanuk, are we not your brothers? And the Prophet said, well, antum ashabi. No, you're my companions. You're my companions. They're fearful. Are we not your brothers? Ya Rasulullah, no, you're my companions. Use it with me. He says, my brothers are those who will come after me. They have not seen me. But they will spend everything that they had to be with me. 
Get the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah that we're from the Ikhwah of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah that He encompasses us in that dua that the Prophet that we become Ikhwah and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, then he mentions here. Man khafafa an malukihi fihi khafar Allah Whoever diminishes from what he owns, meaning he gives it in the month of Ramadan. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, Aftal sadaqa, sadaqa Ramadan. Kama qal Nabi Sallallahu The best of sadaqa is sadaqa given in the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan. He says, Ghafra Allah lahu, Allah will forgive him. Wa'attaqahu min an nar And he will emancipate his neck from hellfire. Wastakthru fihi min arba khisar. He says there's four attributes in it, the Prophet is telling us in the khutbah that you need to stick to in the month of Ramadan. He said, Khaslatani turduna biha rabbakum. Two attributes that your Lord loves. He loves it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Wa khaslatain la ghina lakum anhuma. He says, and two attributes that you're in dire need of, you can never leave. These four you need. Two belong to Allah, two you can never do without. He says, فَأَمَّا الْخَصْلَتَانِ أَلَّتَانِ تُرْدُونَ بِهِمَا رَبَّكُمْ He says, as for the two attributes that your Lord loves, فَالشَّهَادَةُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ It's by saying, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ in abundance. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in Hadith Tirmidhi, he says, جَدِّدُوا إِيمَانُكُمْ أَكْثِرُوا بِقَوْلِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Renew your faith in abundance. By saying, La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. And people say, What's all this dhikr? All this dhikr is bid'ah. And people say, La ilaha illallah. The Rasul tells us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the signs of munafiqeen in the Quran. Tells us the signs of munafiqeen in the Quran. What does Allah say? When they come to prayer, they come to prayer, Kasula. Kasula. They're lazy when it comes to prayer. Naam. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and when it comes to spending, they hate to spend. They hate to give from their money. And the third one, the Quran mentions, They only remember God in a small amount. Only in a small amount they remember Allah SWT. They don't remember Allah, Allah. The Prophet increase in saying, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. Renew your faith by saying, La ilaha illallah, all the time. Look at the Prophet said, مَنْ قَالَ آخِرْ كَلِمَةً لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ بِخَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Whoever says, لا إله إلا الله, يعني محمد رسول الله, as his last words in this dunya, enters paradise without any account. You know, when, you know why you can say, لا إله إلا at the end of your life? Because you said, لا إله إلا الله throughout your life. You know why you can say, لا إله إلا الله at the end of your life? Because you live La ilaha illallah, you breathe La ilaha illallah, you served La ilaha illallah, and you died on La ilaha Muhammad Rasulullah. That's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet said, say shahada to La ilaha illallah, wa tastaghfirunahu, and seek Allah's forgiveness. And that's why in Tareem they're going to say, all the time you're going to hear the Imams of Hadramaut, they put all these two together. Now, he says, the second two attributes, second two things that you need. You can never be free from them. You're always going to be in need of Allah SWT. That you ask Him for paradise. Like the Prophet saw a man one time. He's making dua. And the Prophet said, what are you making dua for? He said, I'm asking Allah for paradise. He said, ask Him for firdaus al-a'la. Like, don't just dare settle for the paradise. Now, I want firdaus al-a'la. I want the highest stations of paradise. Have Him there in your dua. You know, I'm not deserving. None of us deserve paradise. We don't even deserve to smell paradise. We don't deserve, honestly, in our age, many of us, the Sahaba, if we lived in the time of the Sahaba, they wouldn't even accept our Shahada. We wouldn't be Muslim in that time, I'm telling you now. People talking, oh, what I'd be like this with the Rasul. No, no, you don't know where you'd be. Would you be standing with the Rasul with nothing? Would you, in the fasting, in the faith, Halas going up against the superpower of the day? Would you? People, I would. Whatever. You can't even get up a fajr and you're going to talk all that talk. Can't even get up a tajr, you're going to talk all that talk. Don't fast Monday and Thursday, you're going to talk all that talk. Don't fast white nights, don't fast shabbat, you're going to talk all that type of talk. Khalas. The Prophet ask Allah, we're not deserving of anything. We're asking for Jannah. Why? Because Allah is a love he gives to give. And he'll give to whoever he wants, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the fourth one, the Prophet said, وَتَتَعَوَّذُونَهُ بِهِ مِنَ النَّارِ 
and seek refuge in God from his hellfire. Now, so the Imams of Hadramaut, what they did, beautiful, looking at this, look at this. This narration of the Prophet said, then the Imam to put the formula, Nashadu an la ilaha illallah, Nastaghfir Allah, Nasaluka al jannata wa na'udhu bika min al nar, Nashadu an la ilaha illallah, Nastaghfir Allah, Nasaluka al jannata wa na'udhu bika min al nar. Because of that, what the Prophet said, ask him, throughout the month of Ramadan, we should be repeating that all the time. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfirullah azaluka al jannata wa a'udhu bika min an nar should be saying that all the time and then the prophet saw said look later to qadr sayyidina ta'ayi said what do i do what do i say if i know it's later to qadr the hadith that sayyidina ta'ayi mentioned what do i do and here the prophet saw said now he didn't say you won't know alay to qadr he said, if somebody knows that it's Laylat al-Qadr, and how can it, the Prophet telling us the door open for the Umar of the Rasul the door open for Laylat al-Qadr. He said, Ya Aisha, if you know it's Laylat al-Qadr, then you should say, Allahumma inna ka afuwan, tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anna. Oh Allah, you are the one who pardons. You love to pardon, so pardon me. You are the one who pardons. You love to pardon, pardon me. And so the Imams of Hadram are going to say, that dua you should say throughout the entire month of Ramadan, day and night. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, nastaghfir Allah, nasaluka al jannata wa na'udhu bika min al nar. Allahumma inna ka'afoon, tuhib wa lafwa fa'afu anna. You should be repeating that before iftar, after iftar, before prayer, after prayer. Why? Because you're going to have some literalist go say, Well, it's not night time, is it? So why are you asking that? No, Aisha said it, and, 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 her, and she was saying, If there's a qadr, yeah, it's night somewhere else, though, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? You're saying it here, it's night time in Australia, and perhaps it's later to the qadr for them there. You catch a portion of later to the qadr right there. By what? By saying that dua in abundance. And don't forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those of us that don't know the Qur'an. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, he says, Surat al-Ikhlas ta'atilu thuluk al-Qur'an. Surat al-Ikhlas is tantamount to one third of the Qur'an in reward. Now people sitting there say, I can only do one khatim, two khatim. No, 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 no. You can do plenty. Habib Muhammad Haddad here in his book he mentions, he says, daqiqa. What daqiqa is? One minute. One minute, he says, in one minute, you can recite 15 surah ikhlasas. And one, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, yeah. Five khatams of Quran right there. Reward, as if you recited the entire Quran five times right there. A surah ikhlas, qul huwa Allah wa had. Allah was about say, I struggle with the Quran. Read surah ikhlas. Read it in abundance in the month. From the beginning of the month to the end of the month. He says here, من نار من سقى صائم سقاه الله من حوضي شربة لا يذمه بعدها أبدا. and the prophet said whoever gives a fasting person to drink, he says to give him to drink. Like we have brothers fasting drinks out now. the prophet said Allah subhanahu wa taala will give him to drink from my hold, my basin, my basin on that hold. yeah. he says and after that شربة after he drinks from my basin he will never experience thirst ever. Again after that. And that's varying degrees. The Prophet as we know, that our people will tell us, the Prophet tells us that his hold is from what? From Sana to Adin. In one narration from Sana to Adin, he mentions the size of the base and the hold of the Prophet. And he says, you know the number of pitchers, the number of cups, the Prophet telling us, round his basin, he says, they are tantamount to the number of sky, stars in the sky. And they're going to tell us there's over 2 billion stars in the sky. And that's the number of cups, more than that, around the whole of the Prophet ﷺ. Who's given to help on that day to save them? The family of the Rasul ﷺ. They're given. You get to the hold, you drink from that, you're good. Some will be given to drink by Fatima Zahra. Some will be given to drink by the companions. Some will be given to drink by Hassan and Hussein on that day. And the Imams are going to tell us, those who love the Rasul are given to drink by the Rasul ﷺ. 
and those in pro close proximity to the Rasul, never mind the cup, they're given to drink by the hand of the Rasul. Those who drink from that, they will never experience thirst ever. And the Prophet told us, and the Hadith mentions, that a man will come to the hold of the Prophet, and he will go to drink. And as he drinks and he looks up, angels will snatch them at the hold. Snatch them from the hold. And the Prophet ﷺ say, Ummati, Ummati, my nation, my nation. And the angels will call out, Ya Rasulullah, they went away from your path after you left. They went away from your path after you left. They don't drink from the hold of the Prophet ﷺ, not a good sign on that day. And so that here, the khutbah, the Prophet ﷺ mentions on the, on the Jum'ah. Like today, we just finished the Jum'ah today, the last Jum'ah of Sha'ban. We have a great month on our heels right now. And so here, the name Ramadan, as we mentioned, so people ask, why is it called Ramadan? And Shaykh Habib Muhammad here gives a definition. He says, Ramadan, yurmidua dhunub, ay yuhrikuha. He says, Ramadan, the word for Ramadan, comes from the word in Arabic, from armada yurmidu, which means to burn and to scorch. And so here, the, the Imam's going to mention, that like when the Arabs in Jahiliyyah, they reconfigured the calendar, calendar they place Ramadan in the highest month of the year. In the highest month of the year, meaning in the summertime. When it was intense heat, they've made that month Ramadan. But here, the greater meaning of Ramadan is that Ramadan scorches your sins. That's what it's there to do. The month is purification. Although we have to be very, very careful because the month can also be a means for us to be scorched by Allah, Yom al Qiyamah. See, those who don't treat the guests properly, mm, khalas. You have to deal with the master. And the guest is Ramadan. Ramadan comes as an entity. We're not worshipping Ramadan, we're worshipping the Lord of Ramadan. See, the Lord of Ramadan is the same Lord of Adam, the same Lord of Ibrahim, Wa Nuh, Wa Muhammad. Allah does not change. You know, we hear people turn around saying, you know, I feel distant from Allah. I feel like I'm not close to Allah. I feel like I've cut myself off from Allah. <coughs> they, the, the, the question I always ask, who moved? Allah doesn't change. You're the one who changed. Allah doesn't change. He's not affected by time or place or space. Not affected by anything. But you're the one who moved. You moved away from his remembrance. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you feel in the state that you're feeling. But Ramadan now, a chance to reconnect to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. chance to reconnect to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he mentions here, وَفِيهِ تُفْتَعَ أَبْوَابِ الْجِنَانِ As the Prophet has mentioned, every single door of paradise wide open. <coughs> every single door of paradise wide open, right? And we know the door, one of the road doors of paradise, Rayyan. The Prophet told us, the door called Rayyan, the door of those who fast. <coughs> Those of those who fast in the Imam say, those who fast Ramadan. Those who fast Ramadan enter through that door. In the class. Or the Imam's gonna say, no, Ramadan and that which is extra. And what we're gonna find is that all the doors of hellfire locked, sealed. But trust me, all you're gonna see now in Ramadan is your true self. That's what you're gonna see. You're gonna see your potential as well. What you have as a believer. What you have as a believer, you're gonna see it in Ramadan. But you're also going to see your own flaws. You also need to know what you need to work on. He says, "Ajra siyamihi fok al hisab, lianna Allahu, lianna hu lillahi khasa." And he said, "The reward of it is beyond comprehension, because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has made this specific for him." The Hadith mentions that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "All the acts of the son of Adam are for him, except for fasting. That is for me, and I will reward it as I see fit." I reward it as I please. Now he says, he says, Riha Sa'im Atyaba in Allah Misk. The smell, the fragrance from the one who's fasting. The smell from the one who's fasting, from the mouth of the one who's fasting. No, for us it might not be a nice smell. Fasting is not nice. He says, Atyab in Allah Misk. It's more fragrant in the sight of God than the smell of must. Now, why? Because you've left food and drink, you've left your desires for Him, Subhanahu wa Taala. You know, one month of the year. You know, subhanahu, you think about it. You know what? Eleven months of the year, you can do whatever you want. 
You want to fast? Like some brothers tell me, I can't. They can't fast. They find fasting difficult. They only do Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, you do Ramadan. But Allah's giving you up to eleven months of the year. Do whatever you want. Just give me one month. Just give me one month of your life. So, and all we know for Allah knows best. Perhaps, and we Allah knows best. This may be the last Ramadan of our life. This might be the last one. You know, as you say, go strong, go, go home. Like we're all going home. Back to Allah SWT. See, those people in Turkey and Syria, Allah have mercy on their souls. No doubt they were preparing for Ramadan. No, no doubt those middle-aged men, middle-aged women, those young children, those teenagers, they thought and they expected that they were going to live to see Ramadan. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that they weren't going to see Ramadan. Their last Ramadan was the Ramadan before. If we live to Ramadan and we, Allah knows best, perhaps it's the last Ramadan of our life. Don't waste the opportunity. And all you need to do in the sight of Allah is get one Ramadan right. You just need to get one Ramadan right. You think about it, you just got to get one right with Allah. Just get one right in terms of ibadah, one right in terms of niyad, one right in terms of struggle, one right in terms of jihad on the nafs, struggling against yourself, one right in itibah following the sunnah of the Prophet Just get one right, you're good with Allah tomorrow. You're good with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tomorrow. And you're good with God tomorrow. And that's our hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the hope that we have in Allah. We're just going to get one right. Allah sees that change. Sees our sincerity and Allah rewards us for it. And he says here, even no Masa'in fihi ibadah, even sleeping in Ramadan, you're going to sleep a little bit more, you're going to sleep after work or whatever it may be. The Prophet tells us it's worship. He tells us it's worship. He says, no Masa'in ibadah, wa samtahu tasbih, and being silent in Ramadan is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tasbih with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you not be forgiven in that moment? <coughs> Seriously, how can you not be forgiven? When you're silent, you're rewarded. When you're sleeping, you're rewarded. When you're standing, you're rewarded. When you're reciting, you're rewarded. At the time of Iftar, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned two times when a believer is ecstatic. Two times when he's in ecstasy. When? He says one when he breaks his fast and two when he meets his Lord. And here the breaking of the fast is nothing to do with food and drink. The breaking of the fast, the Prophet has been indicating, is the dua at the time of fast is guaranteed acceptance with Allah. That's what it is. See that dua you're making guaranteed acceptance with Allah. And then why are you happy when you meet Allah? Because you'll see the reward of that dua. That's what it means right there. And even for example, Allah, look how merciful he is. Even if you forgot... You ate and drank and you forgot. Now I can remember being a kid living in my granddad's house. And I was like eight years old. And I walked into the fridge and it's Ramadan. I just started eating cake. Because I completely forgot. And my uncle came and he said, oh, You broke your fast. I was like, Oh, I was crying. I was crying. Oh my goodness. And I wish someone would have told me the hadith the Prophet at that time. The, a man comes to the Prophet and says, Ya Rasulullah. He says, I forgot that I was fasting and I ate and drank. Do I have to make the fast up? And the Prophet said, you forgot. And he says, I forgot, I didn't know. And the Prophet said, it's Allah that gave you food and drink. Allah. Allah. Carry on fasting. Allah. Meaning there's no sin in forgetfulness. Even a person forgets. Look at Allah SWT, how merciful he is. Even if a person's sick, they can no longer fast. Look at the hadith that mentions, that man, man, the hadith that mentions uh, that a person, for example, who did good deeds throughout his life and now he reaches an old age and he can't do it. You can't fast. You're on medication. You have the reward of fasting every single day. Why? Allah is not bakhil. It's not miserly with you. As if you're fasting every single day, even though you can't fast. A person incapacitated can't get to the masjid like they used to. They reward, receive the reward of going to the masjid whilst they're alive. So whilst they're alive, receive the reward of going to the masjid. But they can't get there, but they're near every single year to be at the masjid. To stand in night prayer. All those things that you want to do in Ramadan, that Allah, for wisdom, has now prevented you from doing. You make the intention, because you used to do it every year. You have the reward as if you still do it. 
But as the Imam is going to mention now, inshallah, just two things. He says, those people who do not leave disobedience. He says, the certain types of people now, he says, that. Um, he says, there's certain types of people now that they prevented the blessings of Ramadan. They prevented the, le- the, the blessings of Ramadan reaching them. They're those people that now... He says, they're those people that now that have been cut off from that mercy of Ramadan. And he gives a few of them. So he mentions here in the book, Mashad. Please make dua, inshallah. This book is it's been we've translated it, inshallah. We're hoping trying to get it out for next year, inshallah. It's not gonna be this year, but it's gonna be inshallah. Next year, inshallah. So he says here, the ulama say there's four types of people that have prevented themselves from the mercy of Allah in Ramadan. He says, Al Awal Aquli Wali Dehi. Okay, he says the first one is a person who disobeys their parents for the right of Allah other than the right of Allah meaning if the people your parents are telling you to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that that's not disobedience you don't disobey the creation for the creator but here it's for no without any real reason to disobey the parents he says the second type qatiya rahim those who have cut off the ties of kinship they've cut off from family and friends those type of people as well the third one, the Prophet said, Mushahin. Those people who love argumentation. They love to argue and quarrel. And that can be on whatever platform it may be. It can be in the virtual world, it can be in the physical world. And then the Prophet وسلم, he says, Mud min mil khamar. He says, those now who are addicted to alcohol and that can extend to any type of war, any narcotics or whatever it may be, any type of drugs. And those people right now, that even in Ramadan, even after they break their fast, if I broke my fast, I'm going to do that. Left. At that point, those people now, they prevented what? Receiving the blessings from the great month of Ramadan. And so here, he mentions here, رضي anhu just a few more things. He says, the month is not a month of lahu wa la'ib. Yusaddani and dhikrillah. He said, play and amusement is not the month for it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, he says, he mentions in the Quran that we did not create the human being in plain amusement. We did not create this in falsehood. He says, He says, two attributes that the human being was not created for. He says, and he was not created except to worship Allah. Allah says, in Surah Dhariyat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He says, I did not create the human being in the sprite except that they worship me, except that they come to know me, as the tafsir means. They know me through ibadah. He says, Wa al ma'asum, Your Prophet, وسلم, the one who's free of every type, any type of flaw, he says, Lastu min wudaddin, wa la daddu minni bi shay. Allah, the Prophet said, nothing from me is amusement, and amusement has nothing to do with me. It's a time, Jiddiya Jundiya, the month of is a month of seriousness, a seriousness, a month of what? Endeavor. He said, وَقَدْ سَنَّ لَكَ قِيَامَ هَذَا الشَّهْرِ وَاتِّقَافِ كُلُّ عَشَرِ مُدَارِسَةُ الْقَرَانِ فِي شَهْرِ الْكَرِينِ وَقْتِ نَامَ الْفُرْسِ فَإِنَّمَا تَمُرُ مَرُ السَّحَائِدِ Naam. He says, وَذَرِ الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا دِينَهُمْ لَعِبًا وَلَحْوَ وَغَرَتُمُ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا Allah says in the Quran, He says, and leave those who have taken their religion as plain amusement. Yeah? وَغَرَتُمْ حَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا And the life of this world has deluded them. And Allah says, فَذَرْهُمْ يَخُودُوا وَيَلْعَبُوا وَيَلْعَبُوا حَتَّى يُلْقَاهُمْ يُلْقَى يُلَاقُوا يَوْمَهُمْ الَّذِي يُعَدُونَ He says, leave them. Allah says, leave them in their play. Leave them in their play and amusement. Until they meet their day. Meaning they meet their death. That they've been promised. So he says here, the month is a month of standing in the month. Itikaf in the last 10 days. Revising the Quran or engaging with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
He says, take advantage of the opportunity because the opportunity is going to pass like clouds in the sky. It's going to come and it's going to go. And so here, inshallah ta'ala, the great Imam, he mentions, and he mentions many other, mashallah, blessed points in here. So he says here, for example, the masajid, the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they should be brought to life. And then likewise, he mentions also about staying away from those things that waste your time, such as films, such as watching dramas on TV, and all this type of stuff. Put the TVs away, put the social media away, put everything away as much as you can, or limit it in the blessed month of Ramadan, so you make the most. And once you see your potential, then for those people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as they mentioned, Imam Ghazali will mention, the layman fast from food and drink. The average Muslim just fast from food and drink. Yeah, and likewise, engaging with their spouses in the daylight hours. He says, but the elect of this ummah, they fast from food and drink in Ramadan, and also they watch the state of their hearts towards believers. They fast from that. He says, but the elite of the elite, he says, they fast from food and drink. They fast from what? Disobedience of the limbs. They ma- and they also likewise fast from disobedience of the heart inside of Ramadan and outside of Ramadan. He says, for them, every single day is Ramadan. Every single day is Ramadan. And you know, Eid, you know, Eid, for us, we have two Eids in our religion. They both come after two great acts of worship. It's not like Christmas and Easter, which will fall on any time. There's no real reason for those type of events. A new year. We don't have that. We have Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. And they come after two great <coughs> acts of ibadah. One comes after fasting. The other comes after hajj. The real Eid is for the one who worshipped in Ramadan. Like the, the Imam Sahabra to say, ليس al-Eid bin malabis al-Jadid ولكن al-Eid man ta'atahu yazid They say, real Eid is not about buying nice fancy new clothes. He says, the real Eid is for the one who found that his obedience is an increase to God. It's increased to God. Like Sayyidina Ali, karam Allah wajahu. A man comes to Sayyidina Ali, bin Abi Talib, radil anhu, wa karam Allah wajahu. He comes to him and he says, Ghadan Eid. He says, tomorrow's Eid, yeah, Sayyidina Ali. <laughs> Sayyidina Ali says, uh, he says, al yom Eid, Ghadan Eid, wa kulla yom la a'asya Allah, fa huwa Eid. He said, for me, he says, today is Eid, tomorrow is Eid, and every day that I do not dis- disobey Allah, that is Eid. Every Eid for me, every day I don't disobey God Almighty. But the real people of Allah, Eid al-Mubarak, is when they meet their Lord. It's when they go beyond the veil, and they're going to see the results of all that ibadah that they did, that Ramadan that they caught, and it'll be truly Eid Mubarak for them. When they meet their Lord. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq inshallah. We ask Allah that he makes it us from them inshallah. Amen. And that is easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us what remains in the month of Sha'ban. Amen. That we end the month in goodness. Amen. Inshallah that we begin Ramadan in the best of states. Amen. That we begin the month of Ramadan in the best of states. Amen. That we begin the month of Ramadan in the best of states inshallah Amen. ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything wrong that we do in the month of Rajab and Sha'ban. That he forgives. Amen. And we ask Allah to forgive because he loves to forgive. Amen. So we ask that he forgives us, inshallah ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that anything that we've done wrong, that he changes it to good deeds. Because Allah has promised that in the Quran, you better say, Yad Hasanat. That he changes bad deeds to good deeds. We ask Allah that in these closing moments of the month of Sha'ban, that he changes our bad deeds into good deeds with him, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he finds us that before the month of Sha'ban is out, that he finds us in Tawbah and seeking his forgiveness. We ask Allah SWT that we become people of Niyat. We ask Allah SWT likewise that we become people of action, inshallah ta'ala, in the month, outside the month, and every moment that we have that breath from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that we meet him in the best of states, inshallah. Rahman, come inshallah.